A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Welcome back. So it is the first Tuesday of the month of October, which means we have a new rotation of assets for free on the Epic Marketplace. Uh, as always, you can get these assets by going to the Epic Marketplace and going to the free section and free for the month and you'll get these available. They will be available until the next first Tuesday of November. So make sure to pick anything up that you want before then. This month we are getting a Gladiator Arena Environment Kit. We're getting a Dreamscape Stylized Environment. We're getting an NPC Optimizer. We're getting an EP Master Material Asset and we're getting a Deep Elder Caves. So if you're looking at this, you might uh, notice that what we usually get is at least one blueprint asset. And there is none of that this time. I don't know if there was none available or if the quality of the ones available were too low or whatever the reason might be. Maybe we're getting something in one of the permanently free sections soon or something like that. Uh, because the Unreal Fest is going on, some additional assets may appear on the, the marketplace, possibly. I don't know any, any of this, this is just speculation on my part. Anyway, let's jump into the assets and see what they're like. So first out among the assets, we have an environmental pack. This is the Gladiator Arena Kit. It is an environment that consists of 145 meshes, uh, 58 materials, 131 textures and three blueprints. And as you can see, it is what you sort of could expect from a Roman gladiatorial pit. So you can have these uh, audience uh, staircases filled with people watching as people fight in the gladiator arena down here where you could have anime animals or gladiators or whatever else that you might want it looks a little bit uh, fancy for a gladiator arena i would uh, reckon but uh, it, it looks very nice and if you were to take and get a sort of a bird's eye view of this you can see that it looks very nice from above as well and it is merely, or merely, it is only this one building that we are, actually, let's use the mouse wheel and get a little bit, no, there we go, no, it doesn't want to, well, anyway. So this is the, the building that we have everything encapsulated inside of. So that's the Gladiator Arena. Next up, we have the Dreamscape environment. Now, this is a stylized environment, as you might see already here. Uh, this environment consists of 146 meshes, <clears throat> 13 unique trees and bushes, uh, 23 rocks and cliffs, and some spline-based style rivers, and also some uh, stylized visual effects, like you can see the, the birds flying around here. So what you can see here is a pretty epic environment created from these assets. You have some bridges and towers and planets and... Uh, fog parts and rivers and water and more bridges and foliage, trees, etc. Uh, so all of this makes up pretty cool looking environment. Again, this is pretty stylized, so uh, depending on what kind of a game you're making, this may or may not fit what you're going to be using, of course. Uh, overall, looks pretty nice, very cohesive, uh, surely something that someone can make use of. The overview scene where all the different individual parts uh, are available is this one. So you can see that there is not a whole lot of different uh, meshes available. They were less than 150, uh, but they are somewhat modular, the ones for the towers. And you have a few different variations for the bridges. And you have some variations for the different rocks and some of the foliage and these crystals and such. So. You can see from the scene, the demo scene that we looked at, that you can create something pretty epic looking with uh, what you have available to you here. Next up, we have the Deep Elder Caves. <clears throat> and here you can see a subterranean um, scene created from the assets that you have available. And the asset pack consists of, according to it, uh, 250 AAA quality assets of different kinds. 
29 architectural modular objects for building cave interiors, 178 prop assets, huge and small fantasy mushrooms, rocks of any size, skeleton set, treasure chests in different colors and coins, decals for visual enrichment, and a bunch of other details concerning that. So this is the kind of scene that you can create with it, and it looks like a very bright scene for a subterranean scene, but you can see that we get some of the volumetrics in here from the opening of the cave. And you have all of these different mushrooms available here. We seem to be getting a bit of artifacting here, not entirely sure what that is all about, but yeah, this is what it is. So let's take a look at the overview map for this. So here is the overview map. <coughs> Sorry, overview map number one available. There are two here for some reason. Uh, so here you can see some of the assets that you have available to you. So you can see that there are a bunch of different mushrooms of different shapes, sizes, and statue heads, and a bunch of different stone rock and staircase formations here. So this is what they meant with that you can create pretty much any kind of cave interior with it. So you have a lot of variety and options here. And you can also see that there are a bunch of different treasure chests and there's some gold as well and some skeletons. And here we can see some decals as well. And over here we have some small mushroom patches and some stalactites as well. And some small foliage as well. So yeah, you can see that this has a maybe a fair bit more of a selection than the previous asset uh, as to the number of assets but they it, it's a little bit well in my opinion you can probably make something work out of it of course but it it, it feels like uh, since the um the area of which you can use the assets for being mainly for caves makes it feel a little bit uh, uh niche in its usage uh, but i might be wrong you might be able to create uh, very varied cave systems with this making it look very unique uh, all throughout so it's probably just a matter of creativity i would believe next up we have the ep master materials pack in this one you can see that we have a demo scene here where it consists of a bunch of different uh, areas where you can walk into some volumetrics and get some information about it. So in here, it's telling about thanking you for buying the uh, asset. Moving into the different volumes allow you to read a little bit about what they're accomplishing with their different materials. So this material pack claims to be <clears throat> having a wide variety of PBR materials available uh, with a lot of optimization and functions exposed for you to get a lot of uh, things out of it. So everything from uh, over here, we could see that it had uh, PBRs without parameters and some to the right with some exposed minor parameters. Over here, we can see that they're making use of masks and color blends and paint. And here we can see some different types of tiling. Over here, we have some normal examples. Over here, we have some normal generation examples. Here we have some metallics. So metallic colors and metallic maps and defaults and you can see that going through this we have a bunch of different areas where they display a bunch of their materials and how they can be used and what you can make them look like so it is a uh, asset pack that has over it says nine production ready uh, customizable master materials it has 80 template material instances and examples so you can see that really that you have, look, it's pretty cool lava effect going on here. M molten rocks inside of it moving around. So eh, as a asset pack, eh, and since I'm a person that is actually fairly bad when it comes to just the material parts of Unreal Engine, this is pretty cool for me to, to see and uh, both make use of uh, if the need arises, but also something that you can look into and see how are these things created from someone that is actually much better at doing materials than I am? Uh, so if that's something you want to do, you want to get better at learning materials, I think this is a really good pack to actually explore a little bit and uh, yeah, see what you can do. You can also see, no, you can't do that in the, over here we can see, we have a bunch of different 
uh, overviews of the materials as well. So yeah, it's a pretty cool pack from a material standpoint, in my opinion. So next up, we have the NPC Optimizer. Um, this is an automatic optimized NPC uh, component for your game. So this to me, first of all, sounded to be the one of the coolest assets, mainly because uh, we only have a plugin asset, which is this, and no blueprint asset uh, this month. Uh, which was a little bit saddening, of course. Um, how this works is you uh, make sure that you uh, enable the plugin in the um, uh, the plugin uh, part of the Unreal Engine to make use of this. This is the demo demo project that actually is already set up with a bunch of different uh, uh, demo scenes, so we can take a look at, but. In essence, what's going on is we have these characters. There are a few different characters here. We can see over here. Uh, six different characters that are labeled to being not optimized to optimized different levels. And how the optimization is done is through this optimization proxy. The optimization proxy component is what is supposed to be handling uh, how your NPCs are being um, optimized while they're moving around. So what's going on here is it's claiming to be a thousand bots and it's running with an FPS of about 38 or something like that here. And we can change to different maps, which means that if we do, it will enable a new scene with a different set of bots that have a different optimization to them. Uh, and we can see what they sort of look like and also the frame rate. Some of the weird part here is that the bot counts as to 1000 here, and if I press the two key, which is supposed to spawn more bots, the bot count still says it's 1000, but the FPS drops, so uh, I don't know what the hell is going on with that. You can see the FPS drops pretty quickly when adding new bots. We can also see that if we move to a different map here, this is the bots with optimization potato mode style, which I'm assuming means that it's meant to be uh, one of the more egregious uh, optimizations, meaning it's more visually sh shown that optimization is going on. And what you can see here is that the characters that are further away from us are stuttering, um, which is... I, I'm of two minds of this, and I'll get back to that in a moment. But if we move on here to the bots without optimization first. You can see that we're getting a very low FPS. This is of course not great. So rather than this, it's nice to have one of the other maps like this one where we're actually getting a more playable experience, right? However, the it's, it's sort of... Uh, choosing to be something bad and something other bad, right? Because if you look at the characters over here in the background to the right, you can see that they're stuttering quite a lot, which wouldn't look good in a game if you have a lot of NPCs. Um, so the gain here is, of course, being able to play, which is, of course, beneficial, but the, the visual aspects of it really ruins it with the stuttering. And how the configuration is done is a little bit weird, in my opinion, because these bots are supposed to be of different optimizations. So we have the level 1 and the level 4. I'm not sure which one is supposed to be more optimized, but if we check the, the component here, you can see that we have uh, different distances. So we have 15 meters, 25 meters, 35 meters, and 80 meters, which are the different thresholds upon when different types of optimization characteristics take place. So uh, when the character is in a certain threshold here, it will go through its different wave aspects here and check how much is it supposed to be simulating, what is it supposed to be simulating, and how, how often it's supposed to be updating animations and such. Uh, so all of these different waves have different settings, and the further you are away, the, the less... Uh, active, I'm assuming the bot is supposed to be, but if we were to check between the optimized level 1 here, it's third wave, and the level 4 one, we can see that if I keep switching between these two different ones, no 
flags or settings seem to be different at all. So I'm not entirely sure how these are supposed to be of different optimization levels when they seem to be having the same settings. So haven't delved too much into that, but that is a little bit weird to me. But anyway, the, the demo scene seems to be showing uh, a better performance when it comes to the frames per second with the different optimization levels. So if you're interested in this, dig into it, figure out how it works. There's uh, documentation available uh, on the Marketplace page uh, if you want to learn more about it. I have not looked at it myself yet. Uh, but like I said, for me personally, I feel like this is something great that it allows you to have higher frame rates, but I would not want it. I would like to have a demo where it shows off characters that are at least like they were just walking around over here, which is what, maybe 30 meters. I feel like at that kind of distance, we should not be getting that kind of stuttering. And since the frames were not that great, uh, with this, I don't know, maybe you need to be more aggressive about uh, your NPCs that are further away, making sure that they animate much less, and the ones that are closer you have like larger thresholds, because again, you can go in here and optimize when these thresholds are supposed to kick in, right? So you can have a much higher uh, distance here before the thresholds kick in. But anyway, that's just my rambling on this one. Uh, Maybe this is something great. Uh, if you look at the page itself, uh, it has a really high amount of uh, uh, grade. It has 11 reviews and it has an average of five stars. So maybe there is something I'm missing here. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. And uh, if this is something that is of interest of you, of course, make sure to educate yourself more and delve more into the assets. Anyway, that's going to be all for now. Hopefully this was useful to some of you. Uh, keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.